hi guys brian here and i'm back again with another awesome video in today's video i'm going to do a full edit of this picture that we did the background cleanup last week i'm going to show you guys my full edit it's been a long like it's been over a year or two since i did a full edit video from there you might learn a thing or two you know it's been long you guys saw how i did and um i'm sure you're curious to know what has changed so without talking much let's begin Okay guys, so um, this is the image we are editing as I mentioned already. If you didn't see the background cleanup video, go and watch it. We got from here to here. So we are just going to continue from that point to where we are headed. So the first thing I'm going to do is to match everything that we did last week into a flat layer. To do that, I just shift click on the first layer and this all layer and click on command E. And that will flatten it into one single layer so i can you know edit it and um from there the next thing i like doing at this stage is liquefy at this beginning stage since sometimes i you know allow room for um revisions i don't do um liquefy that is too massive at this stage in case the client is uncomfortable with that then i can always um modify it for the very um big liquefy move i do it at the end of the retouch so that if a client is not comfortable or asks that i undo it i can easily do that if you make such a big move here you notice that you have issues if the client asks you to undo it because you have to read the picture but at this stage i just do the little liquefy that even the client would love so you go to filter menu and choose liquefy so i use this tool on top here and basically what i'm going to do is just to push in some of these um some of this you can look at my settings here this is what i use for my um for my graphic tablets and it works very well i don't like using settings that make it too strong because you know the i like when things are in small increments that way if you make a mistake it doesn't show if you make a big move with you know big settings it will obviously show but here if i make a little mistake you would know so i'm not i'm just nudging it out a little my point is or my aim is just to straighten this um these wrinkles as you can see so let me zoom out a little um okay i'll also do that at the leg here for this image there isn't much to liquefy you know it's already a very beautiful the cloth fits well the guy is um you know it's good looking and all that so i don't even have to liqui liquefy much as you can see just the little i've done and it's perfect already so let me show you a before and after this is before after before after as you can see just minor changes but it it um makes a whole lot of difference people are always asking brian how do you get your pictures to look very clean one of them is you know just fixing those small things and getting your line straight but you know it's fabric it doesn't have to be perfect but just get it to a good place and that will give you a cleaner look so I'll now click on OK. And I think uh, the next thing I'm going to do now, since we have already cleaned up the background, is to do the skin retouch. You can notice there are some issues with the skin. For a male portrait, I um I don't do a lot of retouch. Like I don't overdo it. Even for me females, I don't overdo it. I like keeping my pictures looking realistic. So I'm going to edit, but it's still going to look realistic. It's not going to look completely fake so i'm going to use frequency separation for my editing for my editing i usually combine frequency separation and dodge and burn so i'm going to use frequency separation for this one i'm going to use the advanced frequency separation action it's not my action but i can drop a link to it in case you're interested most of you might, might must already have it it's by fx ray so i'll drop a link to it so you can grab it if you don't have it i'll just click on it 
and um, it will bring in the Gaussian blur radius window. So at this point, what I do is I just move the slider and just impute the number until until all the blemishes on the skin, you know, like all the pimples and stuff are blurred out. I think six is too much. Let me try four. Four is um four is pretty good. I can still see some of the pimples there. So let me make it five. I think five is a good number. Yeah, five is a good number. The aim of this is just to separate the image into two parts, you know, the frequency where the texture is in, like the high frequency where the texture is and the low frequency where the color is in. So I can, you know, play around with the colors independent of the texture. So the aim of my skin retouch is just to smoothen out the the transitions from you know the highlight to the shadow to the mid-tone and all that not to get rid of it completely just to smoothen it out so right now I'll work on the low frequency duplicate which which you can see here the low frequency edit that's what i'm going to work on that's the beauty the beauty of the advanced frequency separation so that if you mess up you can always have the low frequency main layer underneath where you can just duplicate and work on without having to create the whole action from beginning so these are my mixer brush setting i'm using the mixer brush tool if you can't see the mixer brush tool just click on your you know brush tool and hold and it will change to mixer brush let me go to my essentials window so that you get what i mean if i change my brush like if i click on the brush you see mixer brush tool inside but i already customized mine to you know be be set up in this particular way so i'll just click on my mixer brush the settings is you know basically just click on this icon here to turn off the weight settings or brush load or whatever they call it and then leave everything at 30. the numbers are different because mine i don't use a fixed number or true i just change the number based on the image i'm working and how the brush is actually feeling but for someone like you, someone that is starting, if you are starting, you can just use 30 or true. So let me just begin brushing and stop talking. So the main point is, you know, use the mixer brush tool and just even out the transition between the highlight and the shadows. I think I've made a tutorial on this before. I can't really remember. I think I've explained all this before, but in case this is your first time viewing, that's what I basically do. So I'll just keep quiet, do it, and then speed it up so that I don't waste much of your time. Okay, so I think that's a good edit on the face let me toggle this is before this is after if you notice i've smoothened out the transition but i've not completely changed the structure of his face which is the point it's just for his face to look a little bit better and not completely different i think i might have even done way more than i'm supposed to you know sometimes we get carried away and all that so i'll just move on to the hand and um I will do the same thing for the hand, just smoothing out the transition. Okay, I think I am done with the low frequency at this point. Let me just toggle before and after. You can see everything looks better but not completely different. So I'm going to work on the high frequency right now and my Photoshop is kind of slow now because I'm recording and that takes up a lot of the memory. So bear with me, it's much slower than it normally should be. So for the high frequency, I use the clone stamp tool just on the high frequency edit layer, 100% everything, I'll just take out the pimples you know all the textures that i don't like so at this point i'm just going to take out 
the things I don't like, there's no rule here. It's just basically, I think that's what makes everybody's retouch different. You, you do what you are comfortable with and another person will do what they are comfortable with. So some people might see this and be like, no, you're not supposed to do that. I just prefer doing that. So you, you could do something different on your own image and that will make your image look different at the end of the day. So just do what you're comfortable with. If you're not comfortable with removing people's pimples, then leave it in the pictures as long as your client or um, yeah, as long as your client don't complain. But if you are the type that likes going overboard, then maybe also go overboard if your clients are comfortable with it. That is what makes everybody's retouch look different at the end of the day because some do a lot of the cleanup and others do very little. And then when you look at the different images, it's, obvi it's obviously going to be different. Then another thing I'd like to mention is that um, this image will be available for download in the description section of this video. So you can just go down there and grab the image and try editing on your own and see how it turns out, whether it will be as good or even better than mine. Like I'm not saying you should compare yourself to me. I'm just saying you should use it to, you know, practice and improve on your skills. Another thing is when you're working with small pimples, in order to, or small blemishes or whatever, in order to avoid the textures looking, you know, duplicated and all that, use a brush that is very small in size so that it will just cover the pimples and not the areas around it. Even right now, I'm using a big brush, so you just use something very small so that people won't really notice the repetition in brush, you know, strokes and all that. Okay, I think at this point, um, I'm done with the face. Okay, I can still see. As I told you, I don't go overboard with um, my male skin retouch. So let me toggle the before and after so that you can, you can see this is the before. This is the after. Let me toggle only the high frequency. This is before. And this is um, after for the face. Let me toggle the low. For the low, this is before. And this is after. So I'll just move on to the wrist, like the hand. And then remove some of this. Not everything though, just the ones I feel I should remove. The funny thing is that when someone is looking at this, you know, on Instagram, they won't even see most of these small things we photographers or retouchers obsess over. Because like at this point, nobody's really seeing all those small minute details. It's all that just zoom in 200% and then obsess over the details. Okay, I'd also like to tell you guys at this point that I I now accept retouching gigs. So if you if you're a photographer and you need You've been looking for someone to retouch your pictures i'm here for you you can hit me up on any of my social media handles and then we'll discuss so you just tell me what you want and i'll get it done for you uh, for a fee of course like not for free <laughs> okay i think at this point i i am done with this let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see it well This is um before, this is after. I think I'm done. I might just want to smoothen out the forehead a little bit more. All right. So that's it for the skin retouch. The next thing I always do when I'm editing pictures is to work on the on the outfit also be it the, the fabric I, I normally call it fabric is to work on the fabric also so right now i'm going to just blend some of the textures on the outfit so that it will look better so to do that i usually do it on the low frequency layer i'll just duplicate the low frequency using command j then i'll rename it to fabric this is the layer i'm going to do my um my fabric retouch because if i do it on the skin layer 
nothing will really happen. The only thing is if I want to go back and, you know, if I make a mistake and I don't like it, I have to re- start doing the retouch from scratch. But on this layer, if I make a mistake, I can just delete the layer and redo the fabric. Or if I don't like the result, then I can just delete the layer. So it gives me that um, that option. But if I do it the same place I did the skin retouch, if I don't like it at the end, I have to delete everything and start again. So I, And I don't like putting myself in that place because some edits can be really long to accomplish. And just because you made a mistake in the fabric retouch doesn't mean you should restart everything. So... Um, when I'm retouching my fabric, most times I increase my um, mixer brush setting. So I can take this up to like 40 and take this one to maybe 42. There's no exact figures. I just move it around so that, you know, it will be faster for me to go through with it. So I just blend the portions of the outfits that there is some wrinkles. Like I don't make it completely fake and smooth. That would be unrealistic. It's just to make it a little bit more pleasing to the eye. Remember, it's the fabric. It's supposed to have wrinkles. It's supposed to have all those things, but just not so much that the the color doesn't look so good. So I just reduce them at this stage by just blending the low frequency because that's where most of the issues is. So even this place that his hand is in the pocket, I'll blend it so that. It's not so obvious. I'll blend this line here. Then I can see some wrinkles down here. So I'll just blend this too. I just like my image being very, very clean. You know not perfect because nothing is perfect in real life but at least let it be close to perfect but still have a bit of that you know um, imperfection to show that it's a picture okay let me zoom out and see what that looks like let me show you what that looks like this is before and this is after I think that looks way better so from this point of view I also you know just remove some of the wrinkles I'm noticing here because that's where most people will look at remember you don't get rid of all the wrinkles or I don't you do whatever you want to do so I'll zoom in now and um, I think I should just blend the color a little bit. If you notice, as I'm using a high setting, like for my mixer brush, it makes everything much easier because each bro, each brush stroke carries weight, like more weight, so it's easier to, you know, get rid of wrinkles and all that. If I used a lower brush setting, it would have been too many strokes to do the exact same thing. Okay, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to go further than that. I'll just go to the high frequency layer and just remove any, you know, any lint on the fabric. And all these um, wrinkles that I removed in the low frequency, I also have to remove in the high frequency. See, all these white lint here. Yeah. I just have to remove them so that the outfit will look especially if it's a fashion you know it's a fashion shoot you just have to make sure that the outfit looks pleasing enough that someone would want to buy it
okay another thing is if you notice i didn't create a new layer for my high frequency because when i'm working on the high frequency i mostly don't do anything that will need me to undo so i just do it on the high frequency i use one high frequency layer for everything it's mostly the low frequency i have issue with because there's a lot of information in the low frequency so let's toggle the before and after before and after and to me that um that looks really really good i wouldn't want to change anything more so that's good to me we are done with frequency separation and um, the next thing i'm going to do is to clean up the eye the, our eyes is not always like white like pure white and all that so you need to whiten it in photoshop i use this action by prince messing he's an amazing photographer and retoucher you should check out his channel he has a youtube channel and i use his action because you know it's so good that i don't even need to create mine so i'll just whiten the eye everything at 100 percent and then the trick is when you are done using everything at 100 percent you you now zoom out and reduce the opacity so for this image i'll go maybe somewhere around 50 something let's see before and after that looks good to me then after this i do my dodge and burn for this image i don't really have much to do in terms of dodge and burn there is barely anything to do in terms of dodge and burn because it's a really beautiful image almost perfect in camera so i'm not going to do much let me turn it over and see okay did i mess up the texture on the skin what i do most times in the dodge and burn is just to off my frequency separation and then you know you dodge the bright portion of the face and burn the dark one so that i can bring back its facial structure if i missed it or while i was doing the frequency separation because sometimes when you blend all those layers sorry all those tones together you tend to soften the face and make it look different from how it truly is so i just darken the dark part and you know brighten the bright part so that i will um, have the face structure back so that's what i'm doing here same thing with the hand i'll darken the dark parts and then brighten the bright part like it's really simple it's really easy it's fun it's like pay, playing a game you know finish stage one you get to stage two and my whole workflow is well arranged so you know everything just moves through smoothly so let me see my let me turn on frequency separation let me see the dodge and burn before and after barely noticeable which is perfect but it has its effects let me show you barely noticeable the another thing i like doing with dodge and burn is just to enhance the the eye you know like brighten it so i could take my float around 11 percent and just brighten this part of the eye and then on the bone i'll darken this part of the eye yeah then you could use this to remove like wrinkles and stuff you know you could do all sort of things with dodge and burn okay let's zoom out and boom we have a very beautiful image there let me show you the progress so far we've gone from here to here very small tiny changes but they are, that's what makes the image stand out okay so what i'm going to do now is um the general toning of the image so nowadays i don't really do too much of you know skin toning masking out the skin to tone and all that i just do overall color you know color grading or toning so for this image it's almost monochromatic black and white i'll just um create a few layers so i'll go to reds hue and saturation i'll then go to reds the skin tone remember when we 
we're cleaning up the skin we notice that the background has a lot of reds that reds also affected the skin so i'm going to adjust the reds so that it won't be so red so i'll go to yellows and sorry i'll go to reds and then move the skin to you know towards um the right by maybe one or two just so that it won't be so red yeah i think that's more of his actual skin tone let me see let me zoom in so i can see clearly you see before it was really red now the red has gone down then the next thing i'll do here is to bring up my selective color i use i like using selective color i'll go to my blacks and just increase the black so that it would you know create that punch in the blacks let me take it by three i think three is perfect let's see yeah three is perfect then um also there i can go to the whites so i can affect this white here and make it a little bit bluer yeah maybe minus four and notice when white is has blue in it it tends to look whiter we move from here to here another thing i like doing when i have color contamination let me show you guys a trick is um create curves like before when you know there was a lot of reds just create curves then click on option on your keyboard if you're on mac or alt on your keyboard if you're on windows and then click on auto remember alt key click on auto it will bring up this auto menu with some options you could choose so if you want it to create the darks and bright just click on find darks and light colors and then what it will do it to get rid of any you know contamination so it's barely done anything in this image because this image is already cleaned that up so but it has at least made the dark darks and the brights to look more punchy so i think that's really good let's before after and i think i like doing to finalize my retouch is to match everything into a flat layer remember create a new layer then press shift option command e then i'll convert this into a smart object why i convert it into a smart object is so that i can always re like undo or change any of the settings later on so let's say i add a filter and i don't like it i can always come and undo it so it's now a smart object i'll go up here to the filters menu and choose camera raw filter i like doing my final you know everything in camera raw i just prefer it there i just do the final toning or whatever in camera raw okay so i'll go to the basics folder and i'll bring the temperature down by minus two then i'll increase the tint by plus two because i think that trick i did with the curves brought in a lot of greens into the image then another thing i do here is to play with the you know contrast and all that so i'll just increase my highlights should i make the shadow yeah i'll make the shadow a little bit darker maybe minus five out of my blacks i make it minus two whites white should just remain where it is then i think that is good if it was something more dramatic i would have i added vignettes but i don't think this image really needs vignettes does it no it doesn't okay let me just add a little maybe 10 or minus 8 let's see this is before after i like that look and what i love now is that the black looks really punchy you know it looks really black and all that so let's see what that did before after notice this you can do it any way you like if you don't like the way it look you can always 
do yours differently then i'm just going to sharpen this image and export and i'm good to go so to sharpen i'll use on sharp mask i'll create another stamp visible layer shift command alt okay no i'll just do it on this um i'll do it on this smart layer i created already smart objects so i'll just go to filter again sharpen and on sharp mask i just click on the face so that it will show me the face then i'll make it 20 20 and click on ok all right so it has sharpened the image let me zoom in so that you can see the difference let me just toggle it on and off this is off and this is on and you can see the difference like it's really sharp if you don't like it across the image you can create a layer mask and you know mask it out of where you don't want so at that point i have a very beautiful and this is an image i would export so let me just toggle the before and after this is before this is where we started and this is after where we are i didn't want it to be too you know this image is already perfect and to me that's a very clean and beautiful image so i'll just go to exports under the file menu exports and um quick ex i'm sorry exporters then I would choose JPEG quality five and leave every other thing the same. Okay, I'll just select them, convert to sRGB and embed color profile. I'll leave every other thing the same unless I'm exporting for Instagram, but this one I want to export it um high resolution. So I'll just export it here and I'll show you guys what it looks like. okay guys so this is the final result as you can see it's a really really beautiful image so that's it for this video guys i hope you learned a thing or two so you don't have to do too much to have an amusing an amazing and beautiful image that's how i edit my image nowadays very simple and straightforward i don't even do much and it looks natural my client love it people that see it always love it so that's it for this video guys i hope you guys learned a thing or two if you did click on the like button subscribe and um expect another video next week but till then if you have any video suggestion you can always um you can always leave it there as a comment if there's any video you want me to make you know if there's something you're having problem with you can always um let me know and i'll make a video on it and help you out so that's it for this video guys thank you so much and see you next week